And that continues for about five minutes. <laughs> Unfortunately. That's as intense as it gets. Welcome to Vigorous PDs. I'm Coach Steve. Let's discuss train cough. And I'll dedicate an entire video to train cough because it's probably the worst side effect you can experience as a man, or at least the man that's been using performance enhancing drugs. Now that I think about it, I think DNP overdose is the worst side effect known to man. So train cough is a close second though, and it's unfortunately very common amongst the people who are enhanced. So let's go into it. And it, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys have already done your due diligence researching train cough. So I'll just boil it down to two separate mechanisms. There's an immediate mechanism that promotes train cough and a lingering or indirect mechanism that contributes to train cough. So let's go over the immediate mechanism first. And of course, it has to do with the carrier oil. So hear me out. All these underground labs, because again, there's no pharmaceutical grade trimbolone available. Underground labs produce trimbolone acetate, enantate or train hex in viscous carrier oils, whether that's cottonseed, grapeseed, maybe sesame oil, MCT is pretty popular. Unfortunately, propylene glycol, migliol, etc. That's all still being used. Even guaiacol sometimes they put, you know, like a dash of guaiacol. Man, inflammation galore. And of course, train cough is being caused by inflammation. So again, make sure that the carrier oil is organic, but even organic carrier oil is rapidly absorbed by the body. So from a biology standpoint, when you inject an organic carrier oil with any kind of active pharmaceutical ingredient, and in this case, that's trembolone. So when you inject, lipases start to work on the oil. And as the oil is being metabolized, the active pharmaceutical ingredient releases from the depot and now esterases cleave off the ester. So in this case, you have trimbolone acetate, for example, in uh, cottonseed oil. The lipases work on the cottonseed, releasing the trimbolone acetate, which is not pharmaceutically active until esterases cleave off the acetate and now trimbolone is floating around in the bloodstream, uh, perhaps being caught by albumin or sexual binding globulin. But the free trembolone in the bloodstream by itself can already cause a significant amount of vasoconstriction within the, the bronchial tubes of the lungs. And you see the same thing that happens with trembolone suspension. I mean, it's water-based, right? And it has no ester. So that's incredibly rapidly absorbed. And I think most people have, you know, for the small amount of people that have used trend suspension, I mean, the trend cough from trend suspension is is absolutely legendary or, or crippling. I mean, <laughs> it depends on how you look at it, right? Probably crippling. Um, you know, you might want to uh, need to get hospitalized after 50 milligrams or 100 milligrams of uh, trembolone suspension if you nick the vein. Now, it doesn't mean you have to nick a vein to get train cough because water-based trend suspension is so rapidly absorbed and there's no ester that all this trembolone if it's, you know, close to a vein, maybe a couple of millimeters off, this deep pole is so rapidly absorbed, it goes into the bloodstream, it can still cause train cough. So it doesn't mean you need to nick a vein to get train cough, and that would surely accelerate it, because now you're dumping everything into the, into the bloodstream, and your lungs will be severely agitated. Now, keep in mind that most underground labs, they still use a little bit of benzobenzoate and benzoyl alcohol. And both compounds actually act as a prodrug because lipases don't need to break down benzyl benzoate and benzoyl alcohol. So you have the depot containing a significant amount of oil. A part of that is benzyl benzoate, maybe 10, 20%. You know, most of the underground labs, or at least the reputable ones, are pretty conservative with their benzyl benzoate and benzoyl alcohol. So maybe the, the benzo benzoate, the benzo alcohol concentration is only 15% of the total uh, pharmaceutical ingredient, or maybe 10% in total. And this 10%, which contains trace amounts of trembolone acetate as well, it's not only suspended in the actual carry oil. The benzo benzoate and benzo alcohol also contain trembolone acetate. So that's rapidly absorbed. It doesn't require lipases. 
And then all the esterases which are available will cleave off the acetate and dumping all this uh, f- free form trimbolone into the bloodstream, causing trin cough. Now, if you read some of the old form threads regarding trin cough, you'll see that they came to the conclusion that a lower amount of benzo alcohol reduced the impact of trin cough if it occurred. And it's not because of the benzo alcohol itself, but because benzo alcohol and benzobenzoate again acts as a prodrug promoting the rapid absorption of trembolone acetate or trembolone enanthate. Now, even trembolone enanthate and acetate or hex by itself can already cause this uh, vasoconstriction within the lungs and inducing trend cough. And of course, if you nick a vein, all this oil goes into the lungs as well, and then you're exhaling this. So the intensity of the trend cough um, will be highly determined by the amount of oil that you inject or the amount of pro-drug effect that you get from the benzobenzoate or the benzobenzoal in case you didn't nick a vein, and of course the concentration and the volume of the injection. So let's say you have a high voluminous injection with a low concentration and you didn't nick a vein, it's very unlikely that you get trend cough. And of course, you know, if everybody would get trend cough with every injection, I don't think anybody would be using it. But, you know, even for me, I think when I use Trenbolone, I would get trend cough, let's say one out of 10 injections. Sometimes you get unlucky one out of five. And it's more dramatic when you start injecting into scar tissue. Uh, let's say the upper glutes or upper quads where I had some scar tissue. You're repeatedly injecting those areas, and because of the scar tissue, the oil disperses faster, because of course scar tissue is hard and it bundles up so it disperses faster, promoting the absorption of this trembolone acetate that's suspended in castor, uh, cotton seed oil, grape seed oil with benzobenzoate and benzobalcohol. So that's the first mechanism that contributes to trend cough. And the secondary mechanism which highly contributes to trend cough, and I already alluded this in the trembolone history video are the inflammatory progestaglandins. Now there's two different kinds of progestaglandins. They're all inflammatory, but there's two different kinds. There's uh, progestaglandins which acts as a vasodilator and progestaglandins which acts as a vasoconstrictor. So it's the vasoconstrictive progestaglandins that contribute to train call. Now, when you get train call through the first mechanism, let's say within the first couple of injections, the progestaglandin concentration within your bloodstream didn't get a chance to increase yet. But with consecutive injections, and let's say you use Trembolone for a couple of weeks, just the presence of these uh, vasoconstrictive progestaglandins might give you already some asthmatic effects even in between injections. And I've seen it happen with a lot of um, guys that did high-dose Trembolone, and I experienced the same thing, is your breathing is labored and you start to wheeze because these progesticlandins are already constricting your bronchial tubes of the lungs throughout the day, regardless of when you inject it, even if you do every other day injections, because, you know, vasoconstrictive inflammatory progesticlandins stay elevated for several days and it compounds with consecutive trimbolone injections. So you just feel that your breathing is labored and you start to get wheezy and, and you notice, especially in, you know, high rep leg presses or, or, or squats or etc. or after having sex. <laughs> really, that's the worst, man. I mean, you go 100% and then it's almost like you had a heart attack. You really need to catch your breath and your heart rate is going dig, 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 like a maniac and, and you're gasping for air because you, you know, the vasoconstrictive properties of these progesticlandins are insane. So you have a cumulatively effect over time. The more trimbolone you use, the higher dose and the longer periods of time, the more these vasoconstrictive progesticlandins are going to mess with your ability to breathe. So now you have the immediate effect causing trend cough, which is exacerbated tremendously from these inflammatory progesticlandins. And that's basically the mechanism of how Trend cough works or occurs. And the only way around it is by using a very, very moderate low dose of Trembolone, just enough to get by and make sure that you put it in muscle that doesn't have scar tissue. Make sure you use a carrier oil that doesn't have a very 
uh, low viscosity rating or is, isn't rapidly absorbed like an MCT or a propylene glycol or a micliol or a glycol. So, you know, grapeseed, cottonseed, ideally castor oil, which would diminish the absorption rate tremendously. Um, of course, again, you know, the underground labs, most of them, they understand that the, other, the end consumer only wants thin oil. Well, thin oil will definitely give you trend cough. So keep that in mind. But honestly, guys, even castor oil isn't foolproof because I've, you know, <laughs> injected a significant amount of Bayer testovirins, which is in castor oil, or Rotex Medica testosterone anatide, which is also in castor oil. And sometimes you get very unlucky and you nick a vein and you inject an entire CC, an entire ampule, which is usually more than a CC if it's pharmaceutical grade, you know, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 milliliters if you're lucky. It goes into the vein and you're still getting a comparable trend cough. Now, it's not as intense and not as dramatic as actual trend cough, but I'm sure a lot of you guys have experienced this yourself when you inject any kind of care oil with any kind of pharmaceutical ingredient directly into a vein, you still get these cough-like symptoms. So it's the active pharmaceutical ingredient, maybe the benzoyl benzo eight, the benzoyl alcohol, the actual oil being exhaled. It will all cause tremendous vasoconstriction within the bronchial tubes of the lungs, resulting in cough because you're expelling all these uh, foreign bodies uh, by exhaling. And it causes a tremendous amount of um, inflammation and, and, you know, of course, an adverse reaction until you're done exhaling these uh, foreign bodies. And then, you know, you're basically a return to normal. So for the guys that have never experienced trend cough themselves, um, let me give you guys a demonstration. So you can, let's imagine this is a syringe with Trenbolone acetate in uh, MCT oil with a little bit of benzo alcohol because usually MCT oil doesn't require benzo benzoate so that's uh, as pro drug as it can get start injecting wait everything is going smooth feel a little bit of a metallic taste then your lungs and neck starts to get a little bit prickly and you're like <clears throat> And that continues for about five minutes, <laughs> unfortunately. That's as intense as it gets. I <laughs> probably need to catch my breath from uh, visualizing. Man, um, luckily for me, that was over seven years ago, the last time I got something that intense. So I hope that gave you a little bit of incentive not to use Tremblone. So that's the intensity of the trend cough that you might get. Now there's a way around it. And it's very simple. It's a Ventolin inhaler. Yeah. So this is Ventolin. The active ingredient is Solbutamol. One puff is 100 micrograms. Now, I used to be asthmatic, so I have a prescription for this because sometimes you still get an asthmatic attack even though I'm mostly grown over it. So I always had this in the house. And I would just take this preventatively. So let me give you guys also a demonstration how to prevent trend cough. You exhale. Man, I wish it was weed or a vape pen, but it's not the case. Um, and this gives you 200 micrograms of uh, solbutamol, which actually acts as a vasodilator in the bronchial tubes. So now if Trembolone cough occurs, it, and, and it will still occur, this is, this is not a foolproof method. This is basically um, like a band-aid at best. But the intensity and the severity of the tram cough will be uh, diminished. So I would just take Ventolin, Salbutamol inhaler preventatively in the anticipation of the possibility of trend cough. And, and one time, you know, I probably nicked a vein and I injected, man, what was it? One and a half cc's of Trembolone when I did my 150 milligrams of Trembolone acetate experiment. 
Nick Levain, 150 milligrams of trimaline acetate straight into the bloodstream. And I, I must have taken like 20 puffs salbutamol to the point it, it raised my heart rate for like hours on end. I don't think there was a trimbalone because I had Trinkoff previously a couple times. And yes, your heart rate will be tremendously increased while you're experiencing Trinkoff, but five minutes after it's, you know, gone away, your heart rate usually comes down. But with the gazillion amount of Ventolin puffs that I took just to calm the Trinkoff down a little bit, my heart rate stayed elevated for hours on end and it was almost comparable to taking a significant dose of Clenbuterol. So again, keep the puffs moderate because if you nick a vein, you're basically just putting a band-aid on the trend cough and you're definitely not preventing it. There's the only way to prevent trend cough is by not taking train and aspirating with all the other compounds that you take and make sure you don't or you take care at least of your scar tissue. So trend cough usually lasts around five minutes. During those five minutes, like I just demonstrated, you'll be uh, cursing at the sky and vouching and promising to yourself that you'll never do it again. Um, unfortunately, we uh, bodybuilders have a very short memory. So the next day, you're right back to injecting Trembolone because the results are so astronomical. Um, so you'll, you'll have to take it on the chin, man. Trembolone is part of the game if you decide to take it. A Ventolin inhaler will undo some of the train cough's intensity, but definitely won't prevent it and might uh, accelerate, you know, or, or shorten the duration that you have train cough. But again, there's no way around it. And just keep in mind that if you experience train cough within the first couple injections, the dramatic increase of these uh, inflammatory vasoconstrictive progestaglandins compounds over time. So if you thought Trenkov was bad in the first two weeks that you use it, Trembolone will be twice as bad at week six or week eight. Be ready and make sure you have a Ventolin inhaler at home just to reduce the side effects a little bit. And I think that pretty much concludes this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Vigorous crew, you know what to do and those preemptive likes and preemptive algorithm comments are highly appreciated. Thank you guys again so much, and I'll see you in the next Trimbalone Profile video series video.